what's the kind of tone of the memorial? Charge. Oh, crap. Yeah. <laughs> it's a cavalry charge, and it's kind of got those those little, you know, the iconic touches. There's the captain in front, and he's got his saber up, and they're pointing forward, and there's flag streaming, and there's, you know, there's muscles rippling in the horses, and it kind of feels like a traditional heroic celebration. What's going on when you look at it more carefully? They are, like, this guy on the side here, he's, like, shielding his face. Uh-huh. This guy's... About to get his day ruined. What's happened to this guy? His horse his has horse been is hit, probably, or yeah. I mean, the horse has has either been hit or has tripped. Uh, what's what is about to happen? I mean, what is the story that's going to unfold here? It, it's going to be a domino effect. Yeah, there's a cascade of you know the guys in the back are totally unaware of of what's happened in front, and the guy the the officer leading the charge has got this heroic you know pose and a heroic look on his face, but is a, oblivious to the fact that this is like the other one, kind of in the process of falling apart. What's going to happen to this guy? <laughs> I, there's a pretty good chance he's going to be trampled, uh, you know, because the, the, the horses are going to be unable to stop. Um, that is supposed to represent Shrady, the sculptor, in fact. The face is modeled after his face, which is a kind of odd touch. Um, he didn't live to see the entire thing cast and commissioned. But you've got the same kind of sense, like there's, there's energy coming, but if you look closely, there is the beginnings of a sort of disaster happening. Um, you have to look for it. If you just step back, you say, oh, standard cavalry charge, looks a lot like the heroic monuments that you would see at Gettysburg or Antietam. Look more carefully and it's, you know, kind of brutal realism. Not everybody, you know, not, the, the charges didn't always work. The, you know, the horses fall, fell down. What's going on on the ground in both of them? I mean, there's like mud in motion. How many monuments do you recall seeing where there's so much attention to the, just the ground and how, na I mean, there's a, there's a chopped down tree trunk on the other side. I mean, it's not like, you know, these civil war, it recognizes that these civil war battles didn't happen on a manicured golf course, but they happened in, in really nasty conditions. And there's, it's all in motion too. I mean, it's, it's mud that's being kicked up um, it's kind of a dirtier, grittier, more realistic version of warfare. And this is pre-World War I. And this is really, you know, really different. If you, if you look at most statues of generals, particularly from the Civil War, um, or statue of Washington, you know, they're turned out in, you know, their general regalia, their officer's coats, and their insignia, and their, you know, standing erect and their chests are out and it's a heroic celebration and that this is something different. You get a little bit of that in the front, but it's kind of got this ironic twist in that this glorious charge that he's leading is a, about to, to meet with a sort of disastrous end. I was noticing a few of the other elements that you usually don't see in statues. As you mentioned, the mud and the tree back there. But look at the horses' mouths on about three or four of the horses. They're exhausted. Yep. The tongues are hanging out, especially the one on the far side here. The one on the near side um, has a wide open mouth. So they've been, you know, charging for a while. This isn't just automatically happening. You know, we're, you know, we're not just starting it. That one sort of looks terrified too. I mean, there's like in the horses and on the on the artillery side, there's a sense of you know that they're portraying the fear, which is a real part of of the experience that. Again, you don't normally see. So, what do you think that uh, what do you think that the the people who put this up, who donated money to it, who designed it, who cast it, who erected it, how do they want you to think about the war? More realistic view. More realistic. Which is kind of before their time. Yeah. And certainly, for me, I, I'm I'm trying to contextualize it within the end of the Gilded Age and the beginning. Imperialism, and I'm trying to make sense of it, and it doesn't, it doesn't jive with my preconceived notions of, of what to expect out of a monument during that time. They were into stuff that was grandiose yes. and heroic, and this is heroic, and it's in a very raw way, in but it's not. In an unusual way. Right. That's why this is raw, so fascinating. Raw. I like that word. Yeah. Yes. If um, this should have been erected in 1918 or 1919, right? I mean, that would fit in with the narrative of how we understand that people kind of gave up their glorious view of, of warfare and, and adapted a more realistic tone, but it doesn't. 